let's start with an example just to give people a bit of context and then we can sort of look at how you break it down for people because it, it really isn't that difficult. I mean, I did, I did a five-step template with, at the National Freelance Conference about a year ago and at the end of that, I said, now, you know, put your hand up if you now have a strong unified message that you think will excite people to want to know more about you and a niche of willing to buy clients that you know will pay you what you're worth. And like 97% of the room puts their hands up, which makes me feel great until I ask the second question, how long is this the longest time you've ever spent on your marketing? And like 85% of the room kept their hands up. So the truth is that it's really not that difficult. The problem is that it seems so complex for people that have never done sales and marketing. And especially people make it sound more complicated than it is because they want to, you know, charge you a huge amount to be able to do it for you. So the what well, let's start with the story just so people get it. Um, and then what I can do is I can give you like a five step process that people can do at home. My suggestion is they partner up with somebody so that they've got an accountability partner. And because, you know, it took me three months to do my own, it took me two hours, it takes me two to three hours to do somebody else's. And it's really because I look at the stuff that they know from an external perspective where everything that I knew was really personal to me. I spent a lot of time learning and I wanted to explain it all. It just wasn't necessary. So I worked with a, a language coach out of California. She taught kids and adults Mandarin. And she was really struggling. I mean, she successfully for almost a decade charged, you know, 50 to $80 an hour. And she started to struggle with, there were a lot of people moving into California and they were opening up their own businesses doing the same thing. And like anyone, when they start their first business, they don't charge as much as they probably should because they're wanting their first case studies, they're wanting their first success stories. And they just want their first base of customers. So there were people willing to charge, you know, 20 to $30 an hour. On top of that, thanks to this new global economy we live in, there were people in China willing to do it for $12 an hour advertising on Craigslist. And now thanks to our friends in Silicon Valley, I mean, there are people offering to do it for free. I mean, I'll teach you Chinese, you teach me English, we just won't charge anyone. So now she's competing against free. So she comes to me, which, you know, it happens all the time, especially with my book, The Introvert's Edge, coming out talking about sales techniques. People come to me all the time saying, Matt, can you help me with sales? I, I really want to get you know, my sales process. I need, to, I, I need to make it better because I, you know, I need new tactics to learn how to close deals better. And with business owners, they have this great advantage of getting the message right, getting the niche right, so that the heavy lifting's done. So you don't need those hard closes or the bulldog closes, things like that. So I said to Wendy, what I prefer to do is I want to avoid the battle altogether. So we started to look at all the client base that she'd worked with. And of all of those people, there, are, there were two people specifically that she helped with more than just language tuition. I mean, these were executives being relocated across to China and she helped them understand these three concepts. The first one was this concept called galaxy. I mean, to us, it sounds like outer space, but to them, I mean, this, that, that's their word for rapport. It's like, if I was going to try and sell you something, I mean, I might spend 45 minutes with you. And at the end of that, if I was a bad salesperson, I would say something like, so do you want to move forward? And you'd say, yes, no, or everyone's favorite. Let me think about it. Now, if I called you back a week from now and you still said you wanted to think about it, I know my chances of getting that sale are going down and down. In China, they're going to want to meet with you five or six times before they even discuss business. And if you bring it up early, they're not going to want to do business with you. I mean, they might even want to see you drunk over karaoke once or twice. And it's just because of the kind of people they are, they're talking 50 to 100 year deals, not transactional 12, 24 month contracts like we do here. So she helped them understand that. She helped them understand the difference between e-commerce in China, e-commerce in the Western world. And the third, she helped them understand the importance of respect, like learning the language isn't enough. You have to reduce your accent. You have to hand people a business card in a certain way. Like what do we do? We just grab it, grab a card and throw it in our pocket and keep talking. Because to us, it's rude to break eye contact. But for them, you've got to hold the card, cherish it, look at all the detail, look at the back, pull out a card case, bow, all before you know sliding it into your pocket. Uh, now, if you don't do those things, it's seen as disrespectful. And I said, Wendy, you're doing so much more for these people than just language tuition. What are you doing? And she's like, well, I'm, you know, I'm just trying to help. And I'm like, yes, but you're stuck in your functional skill. And so many people that watch you know, podcasts like this, they, they really are. They're very much defined by the commodity that they offer. And they do so much more to help people, which is what Wendy was doing for these two people. I said, Wendy, is it fair to assume as a result of the assistance that you're giving these people, they're gonna be more successful in China? And she said, well, I mean, I hope so. I mean, that's the point, right? So I said, well, why don't we just call you the China success coach? I mean, instead of teaching Mandarin, because that's a commoditized game, these are things you already do, they're things you already know. And if there are two customers in this global economy we now live in, yeah, there could be thousands, if not millions. 
So why don't we create a China Success Intensive that works with the executive, the spouse, and any children being relocated to China to make them as successful as they can be when they get there. Now, she loved the idea of this, but she's she was a little bit daunted with, you know, who do I sell it to? And I said, and this is where we start to move from messaging to niching. I said, well, who do you think your ideal client is? And she said, well, my obviously it's the executive. I said, well, you know, I was terrified when I moved from Australia to the US and people here speak the same language, but not your ideal client. And she said, well, obviously the corporation would pay. And I said, well, yeah, I mean, the corporations a lot of times have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars riding on that executive being successful when they get there, but not your ideal client. So now she gets frustrated. She's like, well, who then? And I said, well, your ideal client is actually the immigration attorney. She looked at me puzzled and I said, you think about it. You know, the immigration industry is really interesting. I mean, they'd be lucky to charge five to seven thousand dollars and they've got to do all this bureaucracy, all this paperwork with organizing a visa. I mean, they'd be lucky to make three thousand dollars, especially because they've got to pay to get the client as well. I said, so just offer them, you know, three thousand dollars for a successful introduction. But she started approaching them, like double my profit for an introduction. Like, what do I have to say? And we said, well, all you've got to do is say, congratulations, you've now got your visa. Now, I just want to double check you're as ready as possible to be relocated across to China. And they'd be like, yeah, I think so. I mean, we've got our visa now. Thank you. You know, we've got our place sorted. We're learning the language. Kids are getting pretty good at it too. I think we're set. And we just, you know, they, they just said, I think there's a lot more to it than that. You know, I think you need to speak to the China success coach. I mean, when you would get on the phone to the easiest customer in the world, these people were terrified to go. The corporations were motivated to pay. They were recommended by their attorney. And she got to charge $30,000 for this program. I mean, after the immigration attorney, she made $27,000 for the easiest sale in the world. Instead of trying every day, learning sales techniques to try and sell $50 to $80 in a crowded marketplace. So what we did for Wendy is really say, well, what we need to do is step back and say, well, what is the, the things we do outside the scope of our functional skill? And then what's the higher level benefit of that? So for her, it was, you know, Galaxy e-commerce respect. The higher level benefit was China success. For me, it's business coaching, branding, it's neuro-linguistic programming, sales systemization, social media, video market. I mean, it's too many things. Nobody cares. But when I say I'm the rapid growth guy, I primarily work with service providers helping them obtain rapid growth. The simplicity of that message is what gets them heard in the crowded marketplace.